Mentioned earlier in our intro, we are going to be talking about the Cairo Climate Talks that were held uh, on January 28th and under the slogan of the right to a clean and healthy life and we have the pleasure to be joined today by Dr. Radia El Ghazali, researcher on environment at the initiative uh, of the personal rights and Laura Oxla, head of the science department at the German Embassy. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, ladies, and we would like you to shed some light on this conference and the importance, the main uh, points that you are going to focus on. If you could take you, Dr. Ragi, first. Uh, well, I think uh, maybe... Uh, she, 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 could, she could start? Yes, yeah, sure. Because the climate yes. talks is a series okay. uh, of events. I've attended this one. On right. Uh, so, Laura, if you could give us uh, some uh, a thorough look over the talks the, that were held on January 28th. Yes, uh, the Cairo Climate Talks is a series of monthly events. So every month we tackle different events in a one-day workshop and in a panel discussion mm. the day after in the evening. And uh, this, uh, this event was on environmental rights and environmental justice. So uh, we had Egyptian experts and one expert from Germany to also compare what, for example, the constitutions of these two countries be provide on environmental issues and then go more into the details on uh, specialized legislation, laws and regulations concerning the environment and then, of course, because this is the most important topic, how to really enforce those laws and regulations. Mm -hmm. Like, what about the slogan you chose for uh, the uh, initiative, for the uh, event, uh, the uh, right to a clean and healthy life? Well, I think this is one very fundamental right, of course, and um, we chose this coming slogan to, to attract more uh, attention, of course, but in the end it's, it's very essential, and this is, uh, this is something everyone is concerned with. So we had technical discussions about laws and regulations, but in the end our goal was to raise awareness and to make people understand that this is something very fundamental and everyone of course has the right to a healthy life, to a healthy environment and this is very interconnected. Right. right. Uh, Dr. Radia, the importance of raising awareness among people and laymen in the street and maybe children and the most uh, uh, preserving their nature and uh, uh, the environment, caring for the environment and uh, respecting the rights of environment. I mean, uh, not harming the environment, not harming the, the environment around us, not harming the animals who live in the, in the wild and all that. How important is it and what are we people doing to be able to raise that type of awareness among citizens? Because it's a little bit uh, uh, in need of help. <laughs> uh, yes, of course you are right. Raising awareness is uh, very important. Uh, but before going into this, I, I just want to also add to what uh, Laura said mm. uh, that these uh, talks are held with the cooperation and under uh, uh, the um, co presence of the German uh, uh, embassy? embassy and the government and also the Egyptian uh, environment, the, the Minister of uh, environment uh, in Egypt. Mm. Um, so, and it was very uh, useful. Uh, the workshop uh, was a chance to make a social dialogue uh, between uh, people working in different uh, aspects, for example, researchers like me, academics, uh, also uh, governmental, and uh, people con concentrating on rural and on the education or raising uh, the awareness. Mm. The second day was open to the public and a lot of people they came and yeah, but, but the awareness answer. itself, we need yeah. to know about the awareness. I mean, what are the efforts uh, do you people do to be able to raise awareness among citizens? Uh, you people, this means uh, civil society, for example. Experts. Or experts working. But people are but concerned. I think the environment should be tackled in a uh, comprehensive uh, way. So uh, raising the awareness is one part of it, but I can't deny that people have awareness, <coughs> some kind of awareness. It's not fair to say that they are not totally aware. They are aware of the harm that the environment inflicts on them. They are aware of uh, the, w the polluted water, for example. They are aware of the black cloud when it comes and they, um, uh, they, they um, they, they don't want it uh, to do. 
what uh, should be done uh, is not uh, only the role of the people. For example, uh, people throw garbage in the street. That's true. But also, there is no uh, proper collection of mm. the garbage. Uh, people, uh, they um, sometimes throw hazards. And uh, people working in the construction, they throw it in uh, the street. This is not only awareness. They, do, they know that they do harm. But maybe the enforcement of the law, if it is going to um, inflict some punishments if to, or to facilitate uh, other um, disposal, proper disposal would be helpful. Uh, the civil society is doing the, um, a, a big work trying to uh, raise the awareness of the people about uh, how to be um, more um, kind to the environment, how to benefit from it, how to uh, understand that this harm will come back again uh, to them. Uh, but also, people sometimes have uh, no other way to do but to hurt environment if they are poor, if they are deprived from the services. So it's kind of equilibrium between the two. Mm. Right. Uh, now, as an expert in this field, uh, what do you mean by the term environmental justice? And how can we achieve environmental justice? Uh, just, just to add, I'm not an expert in this field. I'm the science counselor of the German embassy, and in this role, I'm organizing the yes, entire organizing the event. Exactly. But yeah. uh, concerning environmental justice, I think it has different levels. Uh, first of all, if we look at a society at large, we have, of course, uh, different strata of society. We have the poor who are often more affected by environmental, uh, adverse environmental effects by climate change, for example. So we, we can talk about justice within a society, but we can also talk about justice at a, on a global level. Um, if, if we think of climate change and which countries are harmed the most, of course, Egypt uh, with uh, desert lands, with uh, um, with the coastal areas uh, and with the Nile River is of course a country which is more affected by climate change than other countries. So I think environmental justice has, has different levels and is quite complex to understand. Mm -hmm. Dr. Rathier, like you said, um, of course um, my talk is related to the environmental justice and preserving it. Uh, you earlier hinted at several, several problems that uh, mm, the country or any country might suffer from concerning the environmental justice, like, uh, for example, uh, the lack of awareness concerning different issues in society, like uh, the uh, excessive consumption of water resources and energy resources and uh, the garbage issues and uh, even the uh, lack of health awareness, hygiene awareness, and also the trafficking and uh, in, uh, illegal trade of the wild species uh, in, from the wild, the animals. There are laws that regulate that. Uh, is it in the Constitution? I mean, are there laws to uh, regulate that? Uh, uh, yes, yes, there are. Uh, they are uh, uh, the, con the Constitution is the higher, uh, is the higher law, mm -hmm. but it's, it, it's not uh, how to implement I mean, in other words, simple, simple, simple there are laws we have. Are laws enforced? To be able to have the laws, mm. but then there is the enforcement. Uh, the laws uh, are um, better than the enforcement. Mm. They need to be updated because, for example, uh, the main law reg regarding the environment was first uh, issued on the 1994, then it was uh, amended in 2009, but the scope needs to be widened now uh, of the law. But nevertheless, it, uh, the enforcement suffers a lot, a lot of uh, problems. And uh, I think the problem is in the enforcement more than in the law, even the mm -hmm. law regarding the protection of the night. And then you see how um, many uh, violations are committed. Mm -hmm. Even the minister himself is saying that he's coming down uh, to the <laughs> street to remove the violations. So this is not, of course, uh, uh, well, we thank him, of course, for his efforts, and he uh, he just needs to enforce and give the power to the to the law. But we cannot expect the minister to come to enforce the law by himself. The system should be uh, better than that, of course. Mm -hmm.
Mexico and it's the hierarchy, how it is implemented, how uh, um, the uh, violations discovered and then remove all this needs a lot mm -hmm. of uh, work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Uh, what are the main outcomes of the talks, the Cairo climate talks that were held on the 28th of January? What were the main uh, uh, recommendations of the meeting? Sure. I'm asking you. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the Cairo climate talk uh, is, you can say that it, it uh, provides a space for a social dialogue, which is very important very important because an issue, big issue or any uh, issue regarding the political issue needs uh, different stakeholders to come together and exchange ideas. Sometimes even if we, I mean, we don't reach an agreement but at least we uh, listen to each other's uh, perspective. So this uh, was one of the achievements. For example, civil society comes and the government comes, we exchange ideas, we uh, we express what we feel that we, we, we want them to provide, what the issues which we see, we see it is short, and then they also uh, op be open to us and we know from them the constraints, for example, which is uh, narrowing the, the action, the efforts they are doing, and this is one and big achievement, I think. Right. Uh, the other uh, achievement which is, is that it gives uh, force to the issues because also in the presence of the ambassador, with the presence of the minister, with a lot of uh, uh, media like your, uh, your uh, channel for example also, right. it uh, raises the issue among the public, it raises questions, it widens the involvement. Uh, some uh, of the perspectives are taken into consideration further uh, work on it. Mm -hmm. and this is what right. right. Laura, did you follow up on, on the recommendations of the event? Yes, of course, we do. Maybe coming back to the recommendations, I would say that um, the most important point uh, that came out through the dialogue and the discussions was that we have quite a comprehensive set of rules and regulations in Egypt. There is, of course, the Constitution above that all, which has, I think, more than 11 articles dealing with the environment. So um, this is actually quite a quite a good basis for um, for like dealing with uh, legislation uh, of the environment, uh, environmental legislation. And then it all comes to uh, to the enforcement. And I think this has different aspects. So of course um, we need to build awareness, to raise awareness for this topic. Because if people aren't aware of what they do and what is allowed or legally allowed or not, they, they won't follow. So awareness is one step, but another is how to monitor, how to evaluate if laws and regulations are applied. Um, and there are different uh, different solutions to that. You can have punishments uh, and things like that, but I think a, cl a more clever step would be to have incentives for people, maybe adapting the tax law to environmental aspects, adapting economic laws and regulations. They all need to have environment in, so and this might provide uh, a good solution. Right, ladies, uh, Dr. Rabiel Gersoli, uh, Researcher on Environment, Egyptian Initiative for Personal Rights, and uh, Laura Oxel, Head of Science Department of the German Embassy. I'd like to thank you, ladies, for coming to the breakfast show. Thank you. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. My guests, uh, this brings us to the end of uh, this edition of uh, the breakfast show. And, uh, my name is Jim Sim, and uh, I have the pleasure to have with me Levine Ramsey uh, to today's show. Today and tomorrow another episode and a new crew. Bye bye.